praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, you who serve the Lord, you who serve in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Celebrate his lovely name with music. We're here today. We're so glad that you're watching. Let's celebrate the Lord with music. His only Son, all oh, praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And I 
without joy in chaos Got peace that makes no sense So I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I built my life on Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful in every season So why would He fail now? He won't He won't He won't fail He won't fail
But what if we could love the way Jesus did? Passionately, faithfully, powerfully. What if the way we love could make a difference in the world around us? What if that love looked at everyone the way God does? A love which doesn't see the past, but is consumed by a desire to see people come to know Jesus. A love which is patient and kind, not envious or prideful. A love which puts others before ourselves, chooses peace over anger. A love which protects, trusts, hopes, perseveres. Do we love like this? Do we love like Jesus? Maybe it's time to ask a simple question. How can we love better? college, I applied for a credit card and I got one. The salespeople lured me in with promises of building up my credit score so that one day I could get a gold card and then maybe a platinum card. Now there are many exclusive cards available these days. Maybe 
you've heard of the Capital One Venture X or the Chase Sapphire Reserve Card. They sound very fancy. So we are all familiar with levels of greatness. There are bronze, silver, and gold medals. There are levels in video games. But you may not realize that there are different levels of love found in our human relationships. Leonard Sweet is a professor at Drew Theological School who has identified these levels of love. And when I first heard him explain these levels, I was totally blown away. I had never thought about love in this way before. So I'm hoping that you will learn something today and that you will be able to apply it to your life. So we're going to start in the middle and the middle is the golden rule. The golden rule is basically love others as self. Now I learned about the golden rule in my public school and in Sunday school. And I'm sure that you did too. Every religion has their own version of the golden rule. Some version of the golden rule is found in Hinduism, Islam, Zoroastrianism, Judaism, Buddhism, Confucianism, Taoism, Jainism, Unitarianism, and Christianity. Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount in Luke 6, 31, Do to others as you would have them do to you. So we have all learned to treat others the way that we would like to be treated. Jesus says it differently in Matthew 22, 39. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now there is also the silver rule. The silver rule says love as you are loved. It is a do to others as they do to you kind of thing. At first glance, it doesn't seem that far from the golden rule, but this rule excuses us from taking initiative. We just maintain a reciprocal relationship. You scratch my back and I will scratch yours. But what if no one initiates a good deed? Then everyone suffers. This rule also leads to the concept of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. If someone does us wrong, then we are allowed to reciprocate with equal punishment. Exodus 21, 23 through 25. But if there is serious injury, you are to take life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, bruise for bruise. The silver rule is a great attempt at justice. An injury can lead to an equal injury as opposed to an unequal injury. For example, if you lose a finger in a fight, then your enemy would also expect to lose a finger, but not the whole hand. Do to others as they do to you. Now the silver rule works well when people are positive and are trying to actually help each other. But as we know, human nature is not always positive and is not always trying to help. And that leads us to the iron rule. The iron rule is basically love yourself. It can also be stated, do to others before they do to you. The first practitioner of this rule was Cain, who murdered his brother, Abel. Abel was favored by God, so Cain took out the competition. Many political leaders have followed this rule. Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, Genghis Khan, and Hitler all used the iron rule. 
The concept is to survive and thrive by destroying the weaker competition. The iron rule is about loving yourself the most. It is the way of the world to follow the iron rule. I feel that I usually follow the golden rule. And you're probably a lot like me. You are golden. You treat everyone with love and respect. You don't break very many laws. You are an upstanding citizen. You achieve the golden rule consistently, but you probably didn't know that there are higher laws of love. So just higher than the golden rule is the platinum rule. The platinum rule says love others as they wish. Another way of saying it would be do to others as they would have you do to them. The platinum rule truly puts the other person first. Instead of thinking about what you like the most, you think about what the other person would like the most. The platinum rule requires an investment in a real relationship and truly listening to the other person. We can't know another person and what would be best for them until we understand their values and their history. The platinum rule is needed when different generations are involved. How hard is it for boomers and a millennial to understand each other? Answer, very hard. What would happen if a boomer and a millennial actually sat down and tried to understand each other? That's a good question. The platinum rule is needed also in cross-cultural relationships. How hard is it for someone from the USA and someone from an Asian country to understand each other? The answer, very hard. The platinum rule is also needed in marriage. Men and women can be very different and have very different ideas about what is needed in any situation. That's why it is often said that good communication is one of the best indicators of a good marriage. Being able to express ideas without judgment and to really be heard is key in marriage and actually in all healthy relationships. Now Jesus uses the platinum rule in Luke 18, 35 through 43. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And when he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. And Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. And when all the people saw it, they also praised God. I find it interesting that many people told the blind man to be quiet. They had no interest in him at all, but Jesus took the time to have him brought to him and he asked him what he wanted. And this is the essence of the platinum rule, to seek out what another needs and then provide that need. The platinum rule is higher than the golden rule. It takes practice to change the way we think so that we can carry out this rule. But I think we can do it. But there is yet a higher rule, and that is the titanium rule. The titanium rule says, love like Jesus. 
The titanium rule is the highest of all loves, and it is the way of Jesus. It can be summed up by John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. The titanium rule is to do to others as Jesus has done for us. No other religion has Jesus. No other religion has this rule. But actually, this is not a rule. This is a commandment. John 13, 34. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So there are two really big takeaways from this. The first is that Jesus loves you sacrificially. This command was given at the Last Supper. And if Jesus could wash the feet of Judas, who was about to betray him to death, then Jesus can love you. And we have all betrayed Jesus in one way or another. Jesus knows what we have done, and he loves us anyway. If Jesus could eat with Peter, who later denied that he even knew Jesus, not once, not twice, but three times, then Jesus can love you. And we have all denied Jesus. And Jesus still loves us and still gives us another chance. Jesus says, come to him. Let Jesus serve you with his very life. Let Jesus wash your feet. Let Jesus wash your guilt and your shame away. Let Jesus love you. You, yes, you, you with your fallible heart, you with your fearful mind, you with all of your imperfections, you are invited. Let Jesus love you and serve you. And let's not forget that Jesus provided the ultimate sacrifice, death on the cross. Jesus could have changed his mind about dying on that cross at any moment. And yet from the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Our ability to forgive is not a part of our human nature. Our first reaction is to retaliate. Our tendency is to want to fight back. Certainly Jesus wasn't serious about turning the other cheek. I mean, if someone slaps us, it is our right to slap them back. That's the silver rule in action. So how can we forgive? How can we turn the other cheek? Not in our own power. We must rely on the power of forgiveness that we have received from Jesus. Now, I scroll Facebook quite a bit. And I have noticed some sayings that people post that are not true and some that are even ridiculous. But I saw one that has a lot of truth. And this is what it said. It does not take any effort to be rude. It is a sign of weakness and insecurity. Kindness shows great self-discipline and strong self-esteem. Being kind is not always easy. People are rude. Kindness is a sign of a person who has done a lot of personal work and has come to a great self-understanding and wisdom. Choose to be kind over being right, and you'll be right every time. Now, the second really big takeaway is this. Jesus calls us to a higher love. Jesus calls us to a higher road. We are called to a higher vision, and we are called to rethink everything about how we order our lives. It's not all about me, and it's not all about you. 
It is all about Jesus and his sacrificial love. So what does that mean? It means that we will individually and collectively as a church family examine our lives with the help of the Holy Spirit and find ways that we can demonstrate love to everyone. Our goal is not just to accept love, but to demonstrate love. Our goal is not to just be good, but to do good. We can visit people, we can lead groups, we can teach children, we can volunteer, we can feed people, we can give, we can pray. After all, they will know that we are Christians by our love. I love that song. I must have sung it a hundred times by a campfire. It's not enough to think about loving, we must do it. Now this is not an easy road. This is not an easy way of loving. Imagine washing the feet of your political polar opposite. Imagine serving your ex, your ex-boss, your ex-spouse, your ex-friend. This should be making your brain explode right now because it would take a lot of love to do that. So in this new way of loving, we can't rely on ourselves. We must rely on supernatural power. We probably won't get it right at first. We will need to practice. We will need to stay in constant contact with God. All of a sudden, that pray without ceasing verse in the Bible makes a whole lot of sense. We will need to build up our spiritual life through prayer and Bible study and spiritual small groups. We are an army, an army of love, an army that lays down our lives for something so much greater than ourselves. Do you remember that scene from Captain America where they're trying to find the right person for the job? And so one of the leaders throws out a grenade into a group of soldiers and skinny little Steve Rogers jumps on that grenade and tells everyone to get away. That is the heart of the kind of soldier that God is creating in us. God is calling us to more than just meeting together and talking about God and praising God. And we are definitely called to that, but we can't stop there. Now, I have never been to a professional football game, but I decided to look up how much tickets are to a Dallas Cowboys game. Now, this is just a regular game. General admission tickets are $42. But if you want to sit on the 50-yard line on the front row, the tickets cost over $1,000. Now, people don't pay this much money to watch the players in the huddle. They want to see some action. And the same is true for the church. People don't want to see us huddle up. Oh, look, the church is praying and singing and talking about God. The professional football players need the huddle. And the huddle is important, but the fans want to see a touchdown or a sack. The church is called to a higher calling. The church is called to action. We must demonstrate sacrificial love, not just the golden rule. Can you serve those who fail you? Can you embrace those who hurt you? Can you indulge those who don't show up when you need them the most? I can't. I'm a work in progress. And I'm guessing that you are a work in progress too. So let's work together to gain an understanding of this higher vision, of this higher love. Let's work together to lay aside our selfishness and our pride. What are we going to do? You're probably not going to walk out your door today and be able to love perfectly in every situation. But I'm going to ask you to do one thing. Every morning when you pray, ask God to fill you to the point of overflowing so that as you go about your day, 
you can splash some of that love out on those around you. Let's be the church. Let's be the body of Christ. Let's shock everyone by our love. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we ask that you indeed in this very moment would fill our hearts up to overflowing with your love, your unconditional, sacrificial love. And Lord, we ask that you would also teach us your ways. Change our minds about the way we think about love and about the way we think about the people around us who need so many things. Lord, help us to be active in our loving and help us to be more like Jesus, who is the Christ. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and His glory, of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story. satisfies my longings as nothing else can do I love to tell a story which will be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus Let